So we're at a farm here in um, just outside Umberley in Devon and uh, this is a job I've been involved in now for a number of months and sadly there was an eviction at the farm um, and despite everyone's best efforts over the last months to, um, to have the horses removed there's still 15 thoroughbreds that have been left behind um, and now we're getting into winter uh, and the grass that they've been out on is now rapidly diminishing. We had um, some serious concerns for their welfare. Um, so the landowners have um, managed to gain their ownership using the Controller Horses Act and they're signing the, um, all of them over to World Horse Welfare. The horses on site here are all thoroughbreds. Um, they've done okay over the summer here because there's been so much grass and they have had someone checking on them every day. But obviously now as we've gone into winter, um, everyone has noticed that they're starting to drop weight and condition. Um, they all are out just living out on the grass at the moment um, with no, and apart from the, what the members of public are feeding them there's no other feed source for them here and there certainly won't be enough to sustain them over the winter. Uh, we've been very lucky because of the warm weather conditions has enabled the grass to keep growing and has actually kept them going for as long as we, as long as we have because we're now middle of November the conditions actually haven't been as bad as what we would have expected. Uh, but all of them now are right on the cusp. They're all, they're all lean, they, they don't want to drop any more weight and if we don't act now uh, with the onslaught of winter proper we're going to have a serious welfare problem up here. With these horses there's a mixture here of, of all ages from three years old up to 24 and we've got some of them um, are halter broken and can, and can be handled and others that have had very minimal handling. There have been attempts in the past to load some of these horses that haven't gone well, so that's made our job even more tricky now. Um, we've obviously got to work out the right plan to be able to load these guys safely for them and for also for us as well. With this particular job, we were very lucky that there is this infrastructure here that we can use and we've got full cooperation of the landowner. And also we've been very lucky because there's members of the public here that have befriended these horses and have been looking after them throughout this whole period. So they're able to give us some good information. But again, when we, when we arrived, all these horses were out in the fields. Now, because of my involvement, we were able to come up with a plan beforehand and that involved getting them all out of the fields in their little groups and, and actually um, getting them into this barn area, you see. And here now, we'll just let them settle. They can settle now and have some hay and... Um, and calm down before, um, before we look to actually transport them and load them tomorrow. Um, but often these jobs, you know, we're not less lucky, we don't have infrastructure like this and often we can't pre-plan it as well as we were able to with this one. We may just get an emergency call and we just have to go out and deal with what we've got and sometimes it's just a muddy field. Um, and as you can imagine, getting people from all corners of the country down with the right kit and the right, in the right numbers is, um, is logistically very difficult. Um, and we do rely on the goodwill of, of people to be able to just drop everything and come out and help. But again, we go back to the fact that these jobs are never cheap. I mean, people create these problems and often it's one or two people that just create these issues. And the cost for charities and for people like ourselves and um, coming out and trying to deal with it, it can be absolutely astronomical. We rely entirely on the general public uh, and the generosity of, the, of the, um, the general public for us to be able to do jobs like this and to be able to help horses like this. Um, I'm always absolutely touched when I see you know, the, the efforts that public go to to raise money for us and we're eternally grateful uh, and we just couldn't do it without them. So this is Portia, she's a three-year-old thoroughbred. Um, she's one of the younger ones here at the farm and you can see her now. She's, she's held her condition quite well over the summer but she's starting to drop now. That is a quite a thick winter's coat she's got on and actually under there when you put your hand on her you can feel all her ribs now and her spine. Um, these are thoroughbred horses so they don't take, they don't carry a lot of weight traditionally anyway so they don't need to lose much before they really start to struggle and obviously as they get thinner they'll get a lot colder which and it gets into a cycle where um, they'll just drop more and more weight and condition. Um, and obviously when you've got the lack of food, the cold weather conditions, and we suspect possibly these guys may well have um, quite large parasite burdens um, with worms and lice, um, that it's just a recipe for disaster really. And like I say, we're lucky that we're, we're acting now uh, while the weather is still reasonable before it gets really cold because these guys would really struggle. You can see now, now that they're in the barn and they're in their small little groups, they're happy and they're settled. So now for us, it's um, a question of um, doing the loading tomorrow.
We're now starting to load these horses, and bear in mind, a lot of these have never been off the farm. Um, and those that have loaded before haven't loaded for a long time. So we're having to use the, um, the panels, and we've got, obviously you can see the manpower we've got here, and we're just trying to do it as gently as we possibly can. We always have a vet with us on, on jobs like this, so the vet can assess the horses prior to us loading to make sure that they're all fit for travel. And the vet can hear and, and just observe everything that's going on. And if we need to, we've got sedation if some of them are getting too stressed. Um, so we'll have the vet with us all day um, and we're working very closely. And all of these jobs, we have to work really closely as a team. So we've got the transporters, we've got the landowner here, the vets, and obviously the field officers. Um, and you know, we've all worked, we've done this quite a few times together now, so we, we all know how these things pan out. But it, with all these jobs, it's about trying to find the right way of doing it. And we, we tried something earlier, it didn't work, the ramp was too steep, so we've called a halt, we've redone it, and now we've got, our, I've got seven on the lorry already. So we're now starting to load the second lorry, um, so this is a bigger lorry, so on this one we've got eight horses going on. Just had a little group of three geldings go on, um, all big horses, so here at the farm we've got everything from sort of 14.2 right the way up to 17 hands that just loaded then. And um, we find with these guys it's easier just to load them in their groups, um, keep the, they all get confidence from each other so they just go up nice and gently. Um, and we just use a bit of persuasion and a bit of momentum um, and once they know what they're doing they're normally um, absolutely fine. And once they're on the lorry as you can see they just settle really quickly um, and then they'll be just, now we've just got to finish off and put the last uh, couple of groups on and then they'll be on the road. And this is what the job's all about, um, particularly now that I know that the weather forecast is horrendous for next week. Down here we've got sub-zero temperatures, these horses would have really struggled out here. So now I know that they're going to be safe. Um, this situation has been going on a long time and to finally get it resolved um, successfully is just fantastic. So for our supporters at World Horse Welfare that do support us and do give these fabulous donations, this is the front line, this is what we do. We're here now rescuing these horses. They can't stay here. If they stay here any longer, they're going to suffer and, and, and worse. So this really is what the money goes to. So, so we've got now success, we've got all um, 15 horses are now loaded um, and they'll soon be on their way to Hall Farm and Penny Farm. So now this is when the hard work really starts because this is when the guys at the farm the other end will now have to start all the rehabilitation work. This is the latest group of horses to come into Hall Farm. They arrived late on Thursday evening. We've got seven thoroughbred mares. Fortunately, they had already been living together, so logistically, bringing them in and being able to unload them in the dark was relatively straightforward because we were able to put them all into the same field. We allowed them to settle overnight on the Thursday, and then the team of staff here at Hall Farm came down first thing on the Friday morning to assess them all. Primarily, we were just looking to make sure there were no obvious signs of injury or disease on that first morning. We also needed to ID them all, photograph them, and just carry out some routine tests like delousing, etc. Fortunately, all of the horses seemed to be relatively okay on the Friday morning. So the next stage was to ask our team of specialists to come in and give them a more thorough examination. When our team of specialists examine them for the first time, they need to establish their current state of health and soundness. It's not unusual for horses to come into us without any information, past or present, about how they've been, where they've been living, or what, what's been happening to them. So our team of specialists do a thorough examination. Our vets will check heart and lungs, check eyes. They'll also take blood to check for general profile and strangles. And, and in this case, because these were a group of seven mares that had been in the vicinity of a stallion, it was also important to blood them for pregnancy as well. John, our farrier, checked all of their feet and trimmed them. 
all of seven horses did need to be sedated for the farrier and whilst he was carrying out his first examination he did discover that a couple of the mares did have quite significant vertical cracks running through their hind feet. At a later stage, once the horses are more settled and more handled, we will ask our equine dentist to come down and also check their teeth thoroughly. So the first sort of 24 hours when we have a group of horses coming are absolutely vital. We do need to establish their current health status and before we can even think about integrating them into the group of horses at Hall Farm, we do need to make sure that we've got all of their blood test results back to make sure that they're clinically well and not going to cause any problems to our existing stock. So now that we've established that all of the horses are in relatively good condition, we're in a position to be able to turn them away until after Christmas. This will give the horses the opportunity to decompress just relax and settle into their new environment. But during that time, we will also be assessing their behaviour in the field. We'll start to see how they naturally interact with one another. We'll also be assessing how they interact with the grooms when they come down to check them and feed them. So these thoroughbreds are the lucky ones. They were rescued and brought into Hall Farm. They will receive five star treatment from the day they arrive until the day we can hopefully find them a new home. However, without public donations, our work would not be possible. We rely on public donations to allow us to continually rescue, rehabilitate and rehome horses that come into our four farms from all over the country.